something I found really provocative about um, your lecture is the conversation around lament. People don't usually think about lament and joy in the same conversation. Can you tell me about lament and how you relate that to joy? Mm. One of the things that we have noticed in particular around the connection between lament and joy is that often for our ancestors as well as for contemporary young people is that they are searching for joy and part of the work of getting to joy is to actually spend time in lament, in crying out to God, in naming the, the sorrows, in naming the, the tragedy that they're currently experiencing. And one of the key sources that we saw were through the prayers. And so some of the centuries and centuries of prayers were places where people would pour out their heart or their earnest desire to try to experience and, and to tell God, if, if, you, if you will, all about their troubles mm -hmm. in the midst of these prayers. And in some ways, the formula of prayer gave them the space to both cry out out of their distress and out of the trials, but also to, to rest in the assurance that there was a God that was going to listen mm -hmm. and a God that could actually be the source of comfort and the source of joy that they could connect with. And it's also true in terms of the songs that our ancestors and forebears sang and contemporary gospel singers that lament leads to joy. Mm -hmm. I think that's the message in the Psalms mm -hmm. as well, uh, because uh, the Psalms begin with lament, but they always invariably right. end with praise mm -hmm. and joy. Uh, and Barbara Holmes, who's a major womanist theologian, has this wonderful phrase that lament is a herald mm -hmm. of joy. And when we look at the spirituals and uh, when we look at the gospel music, we see that really as the case. You know, for example, our ancestors saying, sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Mm -hmm. But right in the middle of that song comes this, these words, true believer. And in true believer, the message is that there's something on the other side of sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so the joy is anticipated in spite of feeling motherless mm -hmm. a, a long way from home. And then when we hear uh, songs with, I'm so glad trouble don't last mm -hmm. always, you see, is another way of saying, in the midst of the mayhem of life, I can have joy because I know that I'm gonna get on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's gladness and joy. So we see from that that it doesn't always have to, to say joy uh, as a word, but gladness and happiness and praise mm -hmm. and hallelujah. <laughs> I'm saved or hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm free, mm -hmm. you see, is a way of embodying and expressing. Of course, embodying means you don't just sit still. Mm -hmm. You can't sit still, you know, when you're coming out of lament into joy. Mm -hmm. The body feels it, and the body moves, and the body sways, <laughs> and the body dances, <laughs> and the eyes dance, and the feet dance, and the hands dance, you see. And uh, that's really uh, the characterization of lament, mm -hmm. which is crying out to God with all of one's heart, mind, and spirit, but also knowing that there's something on the other side of the cry. Joy comes in the morning. Hmm. Hmm.